God is dead is a widely quoted statement by German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche. It first appears in Nietzsche's 1882 collection The Gay Science, also translated as The Science of Joy German, Die Frauliche Wissenschaft, however, it is most famously associated with Nietzsche's classic work Thus Spoke Zarathustra, German, also Sprück Zarathustra, which is most responsible for popularizing the phrase. The idea is stated in the Madman as follows. God is dead. God remains dead. And we have killed him. How shall we comfort ourselves, the murderers of all murderers? What was holiest and mightiest of all that the world has yet owned has bled to death under our knives, who will wipe this blood off us? What water is there for us to clean ourselves? What festivals of atonement, what sacred games shall we have to invent? Is not the greatness of this D too great for us? Must we ourselves not become God simply to appear worthy of it? Nietzsche, The Gay Science, Section 125, Tr. Walter Kaufman, but the best known passage is at the end of Part 2 of Zarathustra's prologue, where after beginning his allegorical journey Zarathustra encounters an aged ascetic who expresses misanthropy and love of God, when Zarathustra heard these words, he saluted the saint and said what should I have to give you? But let me go quickly that I take nothing from you. And thus they parted from one another, the old man and Zarathustra, laughing as two boys laugh. But when Zarathustra was alone, he spoke thus to his heart, could it be possible? This old saint has not heard in his forest that God is dead. Nietzsche, thus spoke Zarathustra, tr. R.J. Hollingdale, although the statement and its meaning is attributed to Nietzsche it is important to note that this was not a unique position as Georg Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel pondered the death of God first in his Phenomenology of Spirit where he considers the death of God to not be seen as anything but an easily recognized part of the usual Christian cycle of redemption. For, later on Hegel writes about the great pain of knowing that God is dead the pure concept, however, or infinity, as the abyss of nothingness in which all being sinks, must characterize the infinite pain which previously was only in culture historically and as the feeling on which rests modern religion, the feeling that God himself is dead, the feeling which was uttered by Pascal, though only empirically, in his saying, nature is such that it marks everywhere, both in and outside of man, a lost God, purely as a phase, but also as no more than just a phase, of the highest idea. Of course the spirit in which it is intended is a verily Nietzsche manifestation, however it is important to consider the material that gave rise to this idea. Explanation The phrase God is dead does not mean that Nietzsche believed in an actual God who first existed and then died in a literal sense. Rather, it conveys his view that the Christian God is no longer a credible source of absolute moral principles. Nietzsche recognizes the crisis that the death of God represents for existing moral assumptions, when one gives up the Christian faith, one pulls the right to Christian morality out from under one's feet. This morality is by no means self-evident. By breaking one main concept out of Christianity, the faith in God, one breaks the whole, nothing necessary remains in one's hands. This is why in the Madman, a passage which primarily addresses non-theists, especially atheists, the problem is to retain any system of values in the absence of a divine order. The death of God is a way of saying that humans are no longer able to believe in any such cosmic order since they themselves no longer recognize it. The death of God will lead, Nietzsche says not only to the rejection of a belief of cosmic or physical order but also to a rejection of absolute values themselves.
to the rejection of belief in an objective and universal moral law, binding upon all individuals. In this manner, the loss of an absolute basis for morality leads to nihilism. This nihilism is that for which Nietzsche worked to find a solution by re-evaluating the foundations of human values. This meant, to Nietzsche, looking for foundations that went deeper than Christian values. He would find a basis in the will to power that he described as the essence of reality. Nietzsche believed that the majority of people did not recognize this death out of the deepest seated fear or angst. Therefore, when the death did begin to become widely acknowledged, people would despair and nihilism would become rampant. This is partly why Nietzsche saw Christianity as nihilistic. Misunderstandings of the Death of God When first being introduced to Nietzsche, a person can infer the death of God as literal. To Nietzsche, the concept of God only exists in the minds of his followers, therefore, the believers would ultimately be accountable for his life and death. Holub goes on to state that God has been the victim of murder, and we, as human beings, are the murderers. Another purpose of Nietzsche's death of God is to unmask the hypocrisies and illusion of outworn value systems. 8. People do not fully comprehend that they killed God through their hypocrisy and lack of morality. Due to hypocrisy God has lost whatever function he once had because of the actions taken by those who believe in him. A god is merely a mirrored reflection of its people and the Christian god is so ridiculous a god that even were he to have existed, he would have no right to exist. Religious people start going against their beliefs and start coinciding with the beliefs of mainstream society. Moral thinking, is debased and poisoned by the influence of society's weakest and most ignoble elements, the herd. Humanity depreciates traditional ethics and beliefs and this leads to another misunderstanding of the death of God. During the era of Nietzsche, traditional beliefs within Christianity became almost non-existent due to the vast expansion of education and the rise of modern science. Belief in God is no longer possible due to such 19th century factors as the dominance of the historical critical method of reading scripture, the rise of incredulity toward anything miraculous, and the idea that God is the creation of wish projection. Benson 31. Nietzsche believed that man was useless without a God and no longer possesses ideals and absolute goals toward which to strive. He has lost all direction and purpose. Nietzsche believes that in order to overcome our current state of depreciated values that a strong classic pessimism like that of the Greeks is needed to overcome the dilemmas and anxieties of modern man. Either we died because of our religion or our religion dies because of us. This quote summarizes what Nietzsche was trying to say in his concept of the death of God that the God of Christianity has died off because of its people and their beliefs. Far too often do people translate the death of God into a literal sense, and depreciate the value of traditional Christian beliefs, all leading to the misunderstandings of Nietzsche's philosophy of God's death. Now in a world where God is dead we can only hope that technology and science does not take control and be treated as the new religion, serving as a basis for retaining the same damaging psychological habit that the Christian religion developed Nietzsche and Heidegger. Martin Heidegger understood this part of Nietzsche's philosophy by looking at it as death of metaphysics. In his view, Nietzsche's words can only be understood as referring not to a particular theological or anthropological view but rather to the end of philosophy itself. Philosophy has, in Heidegger words, reached its maximum potential as metaphysics and Nietzsche's words warn of its demise and that of any metaphysical world view. If metaphysics is dead, Heidegger warns, that is because from its inception that was its fate. Nietzsche and others, 
Paul Tillich as well as Richard Schacht were influenced by the writings of Nietzsche and especially of his phrase God is dead. William Hamilton wrote the following about Nietzsche's view, for the most part Altizer prefers mystical to ethical language in solving the problem of the death of God, or, as he puts it, in mapping out the way from the profane to the sacred. This combination of Kierkegaard and Iliad makes rather rough reading, but his position at the end is a relatively simple one. Here is an important summary statement of his views, if theology must now accept a dialectical vocation, it must learn the full meaning of yes saying and no saying, it must sense the possibility of a yes which can become a no, and of a no which can become a yes, in short. It must look forward to a dialectical coincidentia oppositorum. Let theology rejoice that faith is once again a scandal, and not simply a moral scandal, an offense to man's pride and righteousness, but, far more deeply, an ontological scandal, for eschatological faith is directed against the deepest reality of what we know as history and the cosmos. Through Nietzsche's vision of eternal recurrence we can sense the ecstatic liberation that can be occasioned by the collapse of the transcendence of being, by the death of God. And, from Nietzsche's portrait of Jesus, theology must learn of the power of an eschatological faith that can liberate the believer from what to the contemporary sensibility is the inescapable reality of history but liberation must finally be affected by affirmation. See Theology and the Death of God, in this volume, pages 95 to 111. New Possibilities Nietzsche believed there could be positive possibilities for humans without God. Relinquishing the belief in God opens the way for human creative abilities to fully develop. The Christian God, he wrote, would no longer stand in the way, so human beings might stop turning their eyes toward a supernatural realm and begin to acknowledge the value of this world. Nietzsche uses the metaphor of an open sea, which can be both exhilarating and terrifying. The people who eventually learn to create their lives anew will represent a new stage in human existence, the Ubermensch, that is the personal archetype who, through the conquest of their own nihilism, themselves become a sort of mythical hero. The death of God is the motivation for Nietzsche's last, uncompleted, philosophical project, the revaluation of all values. Nietzsche's voice, although Nietzsche puts the statement God is dead into the mouth of a madman, 19, in the gay science. He also uses the phrase in his own voice in sections 108 and 343 of the same book. In the Madman's Passage, the man is described as running through a marketplace shouting, I seek God! I seek God! He arouses some amusement, no one takes him seriously. Maybe he took an ocean voyage? Lost his way like a little child? Maybe he's afraid of us, non-believers, and is hiding question mark much laughter. Frustrated, the madman smashes his lantern on the ground, crying out that God is dead, and we have killed him, you and I. But I have come too soon, he immediately realizes, as his detractors of a minute before stare in astonishment, people cannot yet see that they have killed God. He goes on to say, this prodigious event is still on its way, still wandering, it has not yet reached the ears of men. Lightning and thunder required time, the light of the stars requires time, deeds, though done, still require time to be seen and heard. This deed is still more distant from them than the most distant stars, and yet they have done it themselves. Trans. Walter Kaufman, The Gay Science sect. 125, earlier in the book, section 108, Nietzsche wrote God is dead, but given the way of men, there may still be caves for thousands of years in which his shadow will be shown. And we, 
We still have to vanquish his shadow, too. The protagonist in Thus Spoke Zarathustra also speaks the words, commenting to himself after visiting a hermit who, every day, sings songs and lives to glorify his god as noted above. What is more, Zarathustra later refers not only to the death of God, but states, dead are all the gods. It is not just one morality that has died, but all of them, to be replaced by the life of the Ubermensch, the new man, dead are all the gods, now do we desire the overment to live. Trends. Thomas Common, Thus Spoke Zarathustra, Part I, Section 22, 3, Death of God Theological Movement Main Article, Death of God Theology. The cover of the April 8, 1966 edition of Time and the accompanying article concerned a movement in American theology that arose in the 1960s known as the Death of God. The Death of God movement is sometimes technically referred to as theonatology, in Greek, theos means God and thanatos means death. The main proponents of this theology included the Christian theologians Gabriel Vahanian, Paul Van Buren, William Hamilton, John A. T. Robinson, Thomas J. G. Altizer, John D. Caputo, and the rabbi Richard L. Rubenstein.